Today we'll talk about the second movement of the Beethoven Fifth Symphony. It's a very standard excerpt on virtually every list you'll see if you take an audition. Um, there's a theme and generally two variations that are heard. And the reason why it's very difficult is that it's really hard to keep the rhythmic stability in it. There's a uh, dotted figure that is very difficult to keep uh, very smooth while you're playing it as well. So uh, playing molto legato while keeping the integrity of the, of the rhythm is very, very important. Another aspect of the theme, which is very simple if you just listen to it, not very simple if you play it, obviously, uh, is bow distribution. So in the bowing that Beethoven wrote, <laughs> has a full bow using, you know, the all three beats, but then you only have one beat on your up bow before you have two beats on a down bow. So oftentimes I find people will get stuck in the wrong part of the bow and then thus has to use a lot of bow speed, which re creates basically an accent um, and, and thus breaks the line. So, uh, the balance in what you need to find in this is to make sure that that you're not actually using the whole bow, but you're keeping it a consistent enough bow speed. So the line, even through a bow change, sounds consistent. Um, you have obviously shifts and string crossings that contribute to it being uneven. So again, to be incredibly smooth, to uh, retain the uh, rhythmic uh, integrity of it, yet for it to feel like there's lilt and um, just simple, a simple character all the time. So one of the other issues in the theme is being able to shift smoothly between positions and to avoid a lot of, uh, I like to call it goop. So... <laughs> So you have a lot of choices in fingerings, and regardless of what your fingering you choose, it needs to be true to the to the music. So if you want to keep the voicing on one string versus string crossing, every cello is a little different, every person's a little bit different. I don't promote the same fingering for everyone because I know sometimes the evenness between a G string and the, a D string might be so good on a cello that it's a lot easier to get the smoothness on a string crossing rather than a shift. That way, as opposed, I've got a bad wolf on my F, but if I didn't, so anyway, if it didn't have a wolf, it would actually speak cleanly right away. It wouldn't necessarily have the same timbre or the color as you're coming from the C to the F. But again, you're shifting twice, so you're kind of, you're taking a chance if you're not super light with your shifting. What I would suggest to make these shifts smoother is to think about the preparation of your elbow. So, you're coming back in position. In order to release the hand position, you have to lead with the elbow and then release with the hand. Otherwise, you're dragging your hand and you're creating weight and noise that way. And then, consequently, right away after that, you have to go back up to the A. So, I'm kind of feeling like my elbow is in limbo. So, So then you can see how my elbow is actually complementing going back up again. So I don't feel like I'm fixed in a home position there. I feel like I'm kind of roving. The other thing you might notice is that my left hand is super light. And the only way I'm able to shift from position to position is to trust that I can actually let go and know where I'm going to land. Mm -hmm.